up back for another crack. The water's pretty dirty. Still flat, it's supposed to be four to six meters swell today. So it's coming. I'm gonna head down the beach to one of my little spots. I'll surface fish down there. Hopefully nothing big with teeth following it around. Alright, let's all muck around, get the gear on and get in. Beautiful day. Swell hasn't got up yet. Supposed to be four to six metres. Probably will be later. Alright, time to get in there. First hole, first cray. That's a good start. Very nice.
There's some cries in that hall. Woo! That is a big lobster. I'll show you how far oversized this guy is. There's the 18 centimeter measure. This guy's at least 22. Absolute donkey. Oh, can't take you. Gotta go home. That's it. Bag a little bit of tropicals, bag a little bit of easterns, and bag a little bit of slippers. Doesn't get any better than that. Woo! Oh, what a phenomenal dive. Just magnificent, that crack. Just chock a block full of big easterns. These two beautiful crays. Got to upsize a couple of times to get some nice ones. A big oversized one in there. Might have been two oversized. There's at least one massive one in there. About 22 centimeters. Show you how big these guys are. Look at that. Woo! There's a good 16 centimetre cray this way. Oh, 
Look at this baby as well. Ow! Lovely. Very nice. Stud Easterns. A couple of longer peas as well. I don't know how much you can see of it, but the snapper were coming in and eating the legs off these guys. Just crazy. I got a shot into a nice red, but sadly didn't hold him. I saw one about eight kilos in the murk, but I couldn't get him back. And also, a couple of slipper lobsters as well. Pretty unusual. We don't normally get them for another month or so, but anyway, when you see them, grab them always upside down in the cave pretty easy to catch it's just harder to see them always look up in the cracks that's the key for them anyhow there's my nice catch for the day fantastic beautiful conditions except for the visibility but I can handle that when you get lobsters like that just magic oh home for a cook up very nice Right, here we've got our two eastern rock lobsters and two slipper lobsters in a bucket of fresh water just to put them to sleep before we cook them that'll help them stick uh, keep all their legs on when we cook them so we'll put them in there for about 15 to 20 minutes we'll do the trick all right so using a nice big heavy bottom pot we've got uh, just over half a cup of cooking salt i use iodized cooking salt It'll give you that extra bit of iodine so into the pot Now we're going to fill it up with cold water. Depends how many lobsters you've got. Probably about two and a half litres of water to that uh, three quarters of a cup of salt. I'm using the pot this size because these two eastern rock lobsters I've got are pretty big. You can, if you've got smaller lobsters, you can use a smaller pot. It's just easier to fit them in if you've got a nice decent sized pot. So I stir that round with my hand until all the salt's mixed in. Then we're just going to bring that up to the boil. Well, there's our lobsters we're going to cook up. We've got two big eastern rock lobsters and a couple of slipper lobsters. As you can see, there's a big difference in the body size. So these slipper lobsters are going to cook a lot more quickly than the easterns. I'm still going to put them all in together. I'm just going to take the slipper lobsters off first. So what we're going to do is whack them all in the water. You see, I've got my pot nice and boiling hot. Put our lobsters in. You can see the water's made them go to sleep the fresh water i should say that i've soaked them in them on there i like to push them in and get them on their sides and get them right down now we've got our couple of slipper lobsters and we'll just fit them in around these other ones you see there's still a little bit of reflex movement but these lobsters are dead from being soaked in the fresh water so there we go i'll just rearrange them till they're all sitting nicely in and then we'll start our timing from when this water comes back to the boil stella are you looking for some lobsters what's your favorite type of seafood stella is it lobsters yes all right we'll just check and see if our water's come back to the boil and there we go that's what we want to see nice rolling boil See the antennas are sticking out a little bit, don't worry too much about that. We'll get them down into the boiling water later, they don't take long to cook. The main thing is that we've got the bodies right in there. We can do a bit of shuffling around with the tongs. So the time is six minutes past five. Sorry, six minutes past three. So nine minutes for the slipper lobsters. So quarter past three, we want to take the slipper lobsters off. And then we'll give the uh, we'll give the other ones another uh, seven or eight minutes after that. Give them about 16, 17 minutes for the big ones. All right, well, the cooking time's over. Now we take the lobsters out of the boiling water. 
and let's run them under the cold tap. Lobsters this size will keep um, run it under the cold tap for a while, but they'll keep on uh, getting the heat out of the middle of them. The reason you run them under the cold tap like that is to stop them from cooking, help the flesh shrink back from the shell. So when you open them, uh, the flesh won't stick. You'll be able to get them out nice and easily. And this white stuff that you can see here is the lobster blood. That's come out of the legs because I had some broken legs. And this is the little girl's favorite, favorite food of all time. What about you, Stanley? Do you want some too? Some for you? Mmm, lobsters. So nothing goes to waste in this household. Dogs just die for it, or live for it, I should say. All right, what have we got here? Another bit of it. So yeah, don't worry about this white stuff. All it is is the blood that's come out, boiled and congealed. Oh, that's yummy.